What's happening, people? It's Tuesday, the 18th. My morning check in on the news, which is always just horrid. And I will make a comment. Again, it's that double standard that it took so long for that man to be charged for shooting uh, Ralph Yarrow. You know, um, the fact that people want to argue about all these details that somehow um, make it okay for this man to just shoot this kid, unarmed black kid. Uh uh. It's not flying over here. We. This is madness. It's madness. It's not okay. And this illogical, insane fear and hatred of black people just really, it just needs to be addressed. It's wrong. And it's insane and illogical. It's wrong. There's no justification for it. And yet people, that's just, the, the bar just keeps sinking lower that I see all this insane justification or people, you know, just full of, of, of venom, you know, you know, saying really unloving things about other human beings. I was a boy. Man, that's what's on my mind. Okay, now I know that y'all come on here looking for music and I might have some, but um, the main thing I'm going to talk is is an update. Yesterday I could not get, I went to in person to Cox Cable and we still couldn't get my uh, um, email unlocked. I go back today because I, I, I couldn't find my pin number. It's been so long I found it. So that should, that should do it. If it doesn't, then um, the, the hack is creating um, a real problem for me because I can't get into my band camp. Um, so if, so that's a concern. I go there in about an hour. Hopefully the pin number will take care of it. It was really strange how all of the secure things that the tech people had to put me through, they wouldn't... <laughs> It would just loop back and make me start again. So, hopefully, having found my pen number will change that. It's just like, it's like it just, you know, it's very frustrating. It is very frustrating. Um, those are the main things on my mind. Hope you all 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 are well in these crazy, crazy times. I can't help but say these things because I don't live in isolation. I'm not the sort of person who... I do know people who are completely s disconnected from all social media. Um, and I'm just not doing that because I use social media, mainly. You know, I, I kind of like it, but mostly I use it. And consequently... By being in the milieu of social media, I am assaulted with the mainstream media's um, manipulation of the narrative. Things are so negative in the world because we are be pushed, pushed there by the powers that be. Something that never escapes my re understanding is that who owns all this media that we are plugged into? It's the one-tenth of one percent. And so look at the landscape of the media of the world that we live in that is set up by the mainstream media, the one that everyone is plugged into through our devices, our television, etc. On mainstream um, networks and cable stuff, the majority of shows are crime shows, or then there's the escapism back into the westerns. Um, I'm being general here. And then in the news, the slant of the news is if it bleeds, it leads, and it's just gotten worse over the decades. In all other areas of mainstream media, it's clickbait. You know, 
the thing that just ir irks the shit out of me because I like science and the clickbait titles like uh, let me just find one you, you won't believe what the scientists have found it's scaring them to death you know and aliens are here and NASA knows it oh, you know it's just it's PTSD it's like they found a, form, a, a formula that works you dumb down the population so that all they do they don't think they just react and then you pummel them with overstimulation and everybody's shell-shocked and reactionary, which is where we're at. People, someone will say something or do something and you'll have a whole section of the population react. You know, really like um, trained dogs. You know, like some famous person will say something that is politically incorrect and you have this whole section of the, of the population lose their minds they haven't even thought about what they're losing their minds about it's like they're it's like it's like a, a command you know and they just go you know it's insane times folks i say these things because i think some of you don't think about this and i think that more of us becoming aware of this will be less i don't know i just you know i'm always hopeful for uh, trying to um, turn things around for people's kids, because I'm, you know, it really isn't about me, you know. I'm, I'm not the one who's having little kids. I constantly think about my friends who are having, having babies, just had babies, you know. I just had a Nick conversation with Nick Fackler um, on the video shoot. He and then David Nance just had his first baby, little boy. And their thoughts, and then when I bring up my thoughts, you know, and they, their faces just go like this, you know, because I just say, hey, y'all. Uh, you have kids, but this world will be worse. You need to be good dads. That's that's really all you can do and fight, you know, in your communities through your whatever you have to try to make things better for kids. But look at what our so-called leaders and politicians and rich, rich people are doing. Nothing they're doing is for our benefit. It's for theirs. And your children are going to suffer just like we are as a result. If you're still with me, folks, cool, because, like I said, these are strange times. Another thing I'd like to say is, um, as a teenager, absorbing the events of the day and seeing the trajectory of politics and how things went down when civil rights was basically crushed, I saw it. I can remember around 16 and 17 seeing the world as it is now but hoping that it would take longer to get this way and I'm dismayed that it's the breakdown and deterioration of the infrastructure and the um, illusion of leadership of po positive leadership it's gone from my perspective already and that's part of what keeps um, progress so slow is that so many people don't see it or unaware and just keep going and many people are under so much pressure just to pay the bills and, and feed their families and themselves that they don't have time to even consider these things that's why I bring it up because it's just it's on my mind so musically if you're still with me something I played last night Silent Will by Andrea Marcelli, um, saxophonist, I believe, who has put out put out two albums with a oh, percussion. Andrea Marcelli is a drummer, synthesizer. Interesting, okay. Because frankly, of these records, I have two of these records by Mr. Marcelli, and the drumming is is not is not memorable. It's not bad, but it's not memorable. So I guess he's just a good player. But look who's on here. He's got, um, and Alex Acuna, Bob Berg, Mitch Foreman. Of note, Alan Holdsworth, John Patitucci, Mike Stern. And of note, Wayne Shorter. Wayne Shorter and Alan Holdsworth's contributions alone make that worth finding. It's a good album overall. 
but they really bring that extra, that special sauce, that extra super flavor. I just love it. Another thing I'd like to share is, in my own mind, like I think many people, we have a radio station going, right? Hold on. Do you have a radio station in your head where you'll get songs that are in the head and they're on repeat, and then you have to hear them like a single, like on a radio, like like I wish the radio would do like when I was a kid. They'd play stuff I'd want to hear. Depeche Mode, the first single off this, when I first heard it, Ghost Again, I was underwhelmed. Now it's an earworm. I love it. It's the simplicity of that melody, that guitar line, that finally came through. And it's like, God, yeah. It's so simple and so direct and so clear. I love the chemistry that I see as well as feel between Martin Gore and um, Dave Gahn. I love their chemistry. They're good friends and they work. They have a good working uh, relationship. That's a good song and I find myself listening to it a couple times every day right now until it fades. I like that though about that's what I miss about radio. That's my big complaint about um, uh, iHeartRadio and all that clear channel shit. It's like they have a stuck the main channels they have a stuck in the 80s or whatever white man's version of reality that they decide we're supposed to have. And I'll say that because it is whitewashed and it's wrong. As colorful of a world as we live in and I still can't hear more black um, million selling artists on the radio when I turn it on. The fact that I live in Omaha, Nebraska and when I'm in the car, literally anytime I'm in the car, I will hear Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner. And people tell me that I'm I'm making something out of nothing. I am not. I know I'm not. No, I'm not. So these are things on my mind this morning, folks, if you're still with me. That's what Derek's got to say today as opposed to a whole lot of a whole lot of music. Hey Ellie, that's interesting that you were surprised that I have McKendry Spring. There's a lot of you know, even though I've been on here for over ten years you haven't seen half of my collection you haven't and i guarantee you that i can i can surprise almost everyone that watches this channel by what's in here by what i by what i know about what i've been listening to what i what i've been discovering that's why this is fun to share it with you so with that I'll do a pull and see if we get lucky today and something interesting comes up. I'll go down here. Like they say, I have a general idea of what's what. What did I get? Oh. The no, the no twist or not twist. No twist? Is it no twist? Not twist? Is this band, um, I know they're European. I don't remember if they're English or German or maybe a mixture. This is a 12 inch. Run, run, run. Some remixes and a couple other songs. I got to see them uh, play live several years ago. Probably about the, about the time this came out, 2014. They um, were on tour. And they were coming through this area. They didn't have a, a, a gig. But they had time. And it just worked out that they could play at Slowdown. So they did a free show. And I was, I really enjoyed them live, so I bought a couple records. Now on record, these are are less less compelling, but but um, but sonically interesting. So there's, there you go. That was, that's, that's okay. Hmm. Okay. Shoot, I kind of like that. Let me do another one. All right. I know what that stuff is so well. This stuff too. It's like I already know what this. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we come up with this time. Ah, Tio Macero, Miles Davis's longtime producer, was, all, was also a musician, and also needs a, lots of credit. 
for the magic of those Miles Davis electric albums because it was his editing of Bitches Brew that created that and some other things too. Some of y'all know that. This is the thing of his that he did with the London Philharmonic Orchestra and Lounge Lizards Fusion. I haven't played this in a long time, but this has that New York kind of feel to me. But this is good. Um, I haven't played it in a while. Unlike that Peter Gordon that, I, that I'm getting rid of, this is good. This, this has substance, you know. The, uh, so there you go. 15 minutes in. Folks, I hope everyone's okay. Really, really don't understand the depth of negativity in the world today. And I'm just so dis dismayed at seemingly how blind people who have money and power are to the negative effects of this, what we're doing to ourselves through politics and, and division. It's, to me, it's mind-blowing that it's, that it's like, it's so entrenched and it's not, I don't see really any signs from the top, from the rich side, that this is going to get any better any time. So I just have to talk about it, you know, for my own sake. And in ways for yours, okay? Take care, people. And family, always. You know I love you, thinking about you all the time. I'm going to go shave.